Alrighty, welcome to this week's Hot Topic video. I thought I'd get Harley out. She is our two-year-old, well, April. Her birthday is in April, so she's a little over two years old now, by a few months. But this is our Hypo Harlequin Boa Constrictor. Harley, as you can see, she's, she's putting on some really nice size lately. And I figured I would get her out because I usually get the ball pythons out a lot of the time. I wanted to start, you know, making it a point to get a lot of our other snakes out because we don't just have ball pythons, you know, we have other really cool snakes as well. But today's hot topic video is going to be on live feeding and more so, is it necessary? What you know, what are the moral opinions about it? Like when, when is the situation when you have to do it potentially? Is it, you know, is it safe for your snake? How do you go about doing a live feeding to ensure the safety of your snake? Because as you know, a lot of times um, if you feed live, something can go wrong and the snake may not be interested in eating that prey item and then the prey item can actually attack your snake and do some really bad damage. That's why, number one, I'm gonna tell you that any live feeding, whether you have to do it and it's because your snake's not eating and you're trying to figure out what's going on and trying to get them back on food, this mainly happens with ball pythons, all live feeding should be 100% supervised, okay? If that rodent is old enough to have its eyes open, has teeth, definitely supervise that feeding. I know a lot of times for hatchlings when you're feeding them really young mice, like today, our eight new babies had their first meal. I fed them live because that's what we had to do. We tried frozen thawed last uh, weekend and it did not work. But we had mice that were, you know, almost hopper size, but still young enough to where their eyes were still closed and they, you know, moved around really slowly and everything. And, and to give the babies privacy, since it was their very first time eating, I put them all in there and walked out of the room for a couple of minutes, came back in, and I would do that periodically, you know, to ensure that they did eat. And they all did eat. I had a couple of them that took a little bit longer and acted like they wanted to not swallow the rodent, but they eventually did, so that's good. But... Anywho, you should, you should still be checking on things, you know, you shouldn't just leave any live rodent in a tank or an enclosure and walk away. Um, now, my personal opinion, if you have a reticulated python or a boa constrictor here, a snake that has a very good food response, it usually has food on the brain 24-7, would eat if you would give it something. These are snakes, uh, like we talk about, you want to tap train or hook train with a lot of the time because uh, they're always anticipating getting a meal. Most of the time, you're never, ever going to have to feed a boa constrictor or a reticulated python, any snake like that, live food because it's not necessary. They'll eat just about anything. So even if something's in front of them and it's not moving and they know it's not alive, they'll still eat it. Ball pythons can be a little finicky, though. And that's kind of what I want to focus on here because I do personally think, based on experience as a breeder and keeper myself, that sometimes live is necessary for ball pythons. Now, whether it be hatchlings getting their first meal um, ever out of the egg or an older ball python that maybe you just purchased from a reptile show or you just got it from Morph Market and you know, you're, you've given it a couple weeks to settle it into its new home, You've made sure all the temperatures, the humidity, and everything is perfect. You've, you've made sure that you have plenty of clutter in the enclosure, plenty of places for that snake to hide. You've met all the requirements, but your snake is still not eating. Sometimes you have to try live. And there are people out there that don't want to do that. And I understand the reasoning behind that. Because the first time I had to do it, I didn't really like doing it. Um, there were a couple times where I actually had my husband do it because he was just a little bit less, you know, he didn't really think about it like I did. And so, you know, that's that's one thing. There's a lot of people that have a moral, moral issue with it. But I promise you, you know, if you're going to keep a snake, I know it, it sounds harsh, but if you're going to keep a snake, you have to be open to the possibility of feeding live. 
And that is just because this is what snakes naturally eat in the wild. They eat live rodents. And if you're having an issue, you've ruled everything else out, you've gone to the vet, your snake's still not eating, not taking frozen thawed, you want to try live. You just at least want to give it a try. And I'm not, I'm not going to say that I don't think you should own a snake if you're not willing to feed live because I'm not that type of person. I'm not going to be judgmental in that way. But I do think that if you really, really don't want to ever have to feed live, I would probably get a snake that you know has been exclusively on frozen thawed, probably a sub-adult or an adult from a breeder, and talk to that breeder and, you know, kind of ask him about the, the history there with feeding. And, you know, even go a little bit further than that. Maybe don't get a ball python or get, get something else that you know has a good feeding response, like a king snake or corn snakes a lot of times have good food responses. Um, boa constrictors here, I know they get on the larger side, but they do have a fantastic feeding response. Reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, a lot of, a lot of those other types of snakes, it will help you out knowing that pretty much 99% of the time they're going to eat for you. If one of these guys doesn't eat for you, there's more than likely something wrong and you probably need to go to the vet. Now, my approach to feeding live, um, like I said, still supervised because you want to ensure that the safety of your snake is the number one priority. But what I do, like for our hatchling rack back here and these adult racks over here, I drop the rodent in, whether it's an older one or a younger one where its eyes are still closed. I know that's probably going to upset people, but baby ball pythons have to eat baby mice. Uh, that's just, it's, it's about size. It's not because we want to do that. Um, but I put the rodent in there and I listen because I want to get the snakes time and privacy. You don't want to be standing there bothering them or making noise or moving their tub around while they're trying to eat. So I listen. Nine times out of 10, it's really quick. You're gonna hear a thud, which is that snake striking and getting a hold of that rodent. You may hear a squeak from the mouse. That's what happens a lot of the time. When you hear those two sounds, you can walk away for a couple minutes, come back, pull the tub open. If you've got a tank, you can see what's going on. You don't even have to pull out a tub. But if you've got racks like these over here come back check okay but when you hear when if you don't want to watch it happen you know sometimes i will watch just to if i've got time and i'm in here and i don't have to run downstairs and do anything i will just stop and watch through the tub or with it open and make sure that they've eaten for me my emotions are completely taken out of it i've done this so many times and i know that it's necessary in cases, in some cases, especially like when we have new hatchlings and they won't take frozen thawed yet. But if you don't want to watch it, you can put the rodent in there, like I said, turn around if you need to, walk out right outside the door, but listen, listen for those sounds because that's confirmation hearing wise that the rodent has been taken by the snake. But that's just my approach. If you don't want to have to see it, um, if you don't want to have to feel too terrible about it, unfortunately, sometimes live is necessary. I personally believe sometimes live is necessary. I know that there's people out there that say, no, there's never a circumstance where you should ever have to feed live. But I disagree with that a little bit when it comes to ball pythons. Now, with these guys and reticulated pythons and some of the bigger snakes out there that have a really good food response, I'm pretty certain they're going to take frozen thawed, like I said, unless they're sick, unless something's going on. So, And with those bigger snakes, you know, you're, you're going to be feeding them bigger prey. So you wouldn't want a rabbit or a guinea pig or a pig or anything like that to attack your snake because it could cause a lot of damage. But even rats and mice can cause a lot of damage to your ball python. So that's why... Even if you need to resort to live for your ball python to get it back on food or to assess the situation, see what's going on, just get some food in your snake 
you still want to be monitoring that feeding. You still, like, even if you turn around, you don't want to look. You still want to be listening for the, for those sounds of the snake striking and uh, taking the rodent. And you want, to, you want to make sure that that snake has eaten that rodent. Because at the end of the day, whether you have a negative opinion on feeding live or not, your snake's well-being matters more than your feelings. And I'm not saying that to be mean at all. I'm not saying that to be mean. I've helped people before. We're, we're helping uh, someone now that's a friend of ours. Their snake just wouldn't take food, wouldn't take live, wouldn't take frozen thawed. She didn't want to feed live. But she tried it for her snake because she cares about her snake. And then when that didn't work, she came to us. And we, we took this hatchling in. And it's not even a hatchling she bought from us. This is one she bought from another breeder. So this is, this is the type of people that we are over here at Magic City Morse. We take in snakes that we didn't even produce. And we help people with them because we care. We, and, and we've successfully gotten him to take frozen thawed. And so he's got maybe a couple more meals to go and he gets to go back to his owner. And, and we've, you know, thankfully gotten him on food. So, you know, it's all about doing the right thing, guys. It's all about doing the right thing. What's in the best interest for your snake? What's going to keep your snake happy and healthy? And if you need help, if you need to find a breeder like us, if you need to uh, find, go find a vet, an exotic vet to take your snake to, by all means, do that, even if you feel like you couldn't afford something, if something were to be wrong, because it's better to know what's going on. A lot of times, you can still take your snake in, and you can pay an examination fee, but if they want to add anything else on there, if they want to do x-ray, if they want to do tests, anything like that, you can deny things like that if you need to at the moment, or you can just simply ask what the cost is going to be. You don't have to be roped into paying a bunch of money up front for something if you don't have the money available. Um, I know sometimes it gets hard, especially right now with the holidays coming up, you know? It gets hard. But we hope you enjoyed today's video. We're going to be doing a breeding update video next week, more than likely Monday if I get a chance. Uh, probably be towards the middle of the week if I don't get a chance Monday. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Also, if you haven't already, please follow us on Instagram. Our name is at magic underscore city underscore morse. We are also on TikTok. We are at magic city morse on TikTok. We are also magic city morse on Facebook. You can also find us on Facebook. We will see you guys next time.